Welcome, my colleague Zhijiang and I will introduce Flink, which is Alibaba's version of Flink and its runtime improvements for large scale streaming at Alibaba. Okay. Uh, our talk will cover three topics. In the first topic, I will give an introduction about Flink and its application in Alibaba. Uh, in the second topic, we will give more details about the improvements to Flink runtime. At last, I will talk about our uh, future plans. Uh, first, uh, let me introduce Blink. Blink is Alibaba's version of Flink. Uh, we have looked into Flink since two years ago. Our team is responsible for all the data processing applications uh, of Alibaba search products. Uh, and th these products often include the, <coughs> the daily batch jobs uh, to pr process all the documents and also the uh, streaming job to deliver the incremental updates to the search engine. Um, uh, to avoid maintaining two code bases, we really want a unified computer engine. Uh, after some, some investigation, uh, we found that Flink is the best choice for us. But quickly we discovered that uh, a few issues in Flink that will, that may be, uh, can be a problem for large scale applications at Alibaba. So we started a Flink project, which aimed to make Flink work reliably and efficiently at the very large scale at Alibaba. And so far, we have made various improvements in Flink runtime, such as runs natively on young cluster, and uh, some failover optimizations for faster recovery, and also some topics about and some improvements about the performance. Now we are working actively with the Flink community to contribute our works back since last August, and now a lot of progress has been made uh, for the integration, and we are uh, fully committed to the cooperation with the Flink community. Okay. Now, let me show the Blink ecosystems in Alibaba. Uh, the Blink runtime engine run on top of Hadoop. It will uh, allocate resources from Yang for every job, and uh, persistent the job states to the HDFS. So Blink is easily integrated with the existing Hadoop clusters and can leverage Hadoop. Uh, besides the data stream and the data set API, Blink also provides high-level SQL and table API for applications in Alibaba. Uh, this can simplify the development for the developer. Blink also has its own machine learning platform built on top of the Flink engine. Now, Blink has, Blink has supported many key online productions in Alibaba, such as the search, recommendation, ads, business intelligence, and the security. Okay. Now let's, let me talk about the Bing in Alibaba intro production. <coughs> Up to now, Bing has been in production at Alibaba for almost one year. And now Bing has run on thousands of nodes in production with hundreds of jobs. The biggest cluster in Alibaba is more than 1,000 nodes. And the biggest job has tens of terabytes states and thousands of subtasks. Uh, Blink has uh, uh, supported uh, many key production serv services on last November 11th, uh, which is China Singles Day. The, the China Singles Day is by far the biggest shopping festival in China, uh, which is similar to the Black Friday in US. And last year, it recorded 
17.8 million US dollar worth of gross merchandise volumes in one day. And Blink is used, uh, is used to do the real time machine learning and increase the conversion by around 30% in that day. Oh, okay. Then, um, I will talk about the architect architecture of the Blink. Uh, Blink job can run natively on Hadoop Yarn. Uh, there is a dedicated job manager and uh, resource manager run in Yarn application master for every job. The job, must, the job manager is responsible for the task scheduling and uh, the checkpoint coordination. And the resource manager is responsible for the resource allocation according to the job resource spec and uh, launch several task managers on demand for this job by Yarn. This architecture could make job resource allocation really dynamic and make it possible to handle a large number of jobs in one cluster. Blink also has its own Customize the RocksDB state backend, which can checkpoint the job states to that DFS incrementally and uh, asynchronously. In order to make Blink to be easily integrated with Alibaba ecosystem, Blink also developed many kinds of connectors, which could make Blink easily read and write data from Alibaba data lake. And Flink and, and Blink also uh, provided the customized metrics reporter and the web monitor in Alibaba. The metrics reporter can put a runtime metrics to Alibaba's metric monitor system in production for the real-time monitoring and alert for our Blink jobs. And the web monitor could make it easy for uh, our Alibaba's uh, developer to debug their jobs. Okay, uh, that's the topic one, the introduction of Blink. Then, uh, in the next topic, uh, we will give more details about the improvements to Flink runtime. Firstly, I will talk about the native integration with resource management and some subtop subtopics about the performance improvements. Then my colleague Zhi Jiang will talk about the failover optimization. Uh, first, let's look at the nat native integration with the resource management. Uh, and under the current Flink resource management architecture, the cluster resource is allocated upfront, so the resource allocation cannot be efficient. And there is also a single job manager to handle all the jobs. So the cluster scale will be limited. So we propose a new design for native integration with the resource management. Now let's look at it and see how it works. The main change of this design <coughs> in this design is that there is a dedicated job manager for every job and it could request the slot to the resource manager according to the job resource spec and launch the task managers on demand. So the job resource allocation could be really dynamic and the class scale will not be limited by a single point anymore. <coughs> now we, we have contributed this architecture improvement to Flink community as Flip6. Let's take Yarn as an example. Uh, in the Yarn mode, uh, there's a dedicated job manager and a resource manager run in a, a Yarn application manager for every job. And they will launch several task managers according to the job resource spec by Yarn resource manager. Uh, next, I will uh, talk about the two sub 
topics about the performance improvements. Uh, now let's look at the incremental checkpoint firstly. Uh, in Alibaba, the job job state could be very large online, maybe many, maybe reach many terabytes, and the state size of individual task can be many gigabytes. Uh, under the four checkpoint design, Flink should materialize the old states to persistent storage for each checkpoint, which could cost a lot of I.O. and give much pressure to the persistent storage. As the states get bigger, the materialization may take longer and longer, and eventually it may take too long to finish. So we implemented the so we implemented the incremental checkpoint, which only materialized the modified states since last checkpoint. This will make the checkpoint more efficient and faster. Okay. And now let's see how it works. In this design, the state snapshot should be composed of a list of deltas. Each delta represents a set of new updates. The states in different checkpoints may share some common deltas. In every checkpoint, it, need, it only needed to materialize the new delta, deltas since last checkpoint. The delta list of every checkpoint will be sent to checkpoint coordinator through city handle and then be stored in the corresponding complete checkpoint in GM, <laughs> job manager. Uh, as we know, the number of the complete checkpoint is limited. So when the completed checkpoint is out of date, it should be subsumed. But we can't delete all the data in this checkpoint directly because some of them may be also contained by other checkpoints. In order to solve this problem, we introduced a new component called state registry. It will manage the reference counts of all the data. When a checkpoint completes, the reference counts of all the data will, <coughs> will be increased. And then, and when a checkpoint expires, the reference counts of all the data in this, in this checkpoint will be decreased. We can delete the data, data when its reference count reaches zero. Now we are contributing this performance improvement to Flink's community recently. <coughs> now, Let's take RocksDB state backend as an example. Uh, in checkpoint one, the local RocksDB instance will contain, uh, contains the Delta one, Delta two, and the Delta three, the three files, SST files. Uh, because this is the first checkpoint, so all of them will be copied to HDFS. Uh, in checkpoint two, the local RocksDB instance contains Delta 2, Delta 3, and Delta 4, three files. And the Delta 4 file is a new file for this checkpoint. So only the Delta 4, this SSD file, will be copied to HDFS in checkpoint 2. So this shows how the incremental checkpoint works. Now, let me talk about the next the subtopic about the performance improvements. Async operator. As we know, Flink, take, uh, Flink task use a single thread to pro process events. Uh, and sometimes Flink task need to access some external services, uh, such as HBase, uh, Cassandra, and or Redis. 
the high latency of these services may block the processing and limit the throughput of the task. For example, if the HBase response, response latency is one millisecond, the max throughput of the task could only be 1,000. So in order to solve this problem, we introduced the, the async operator, which could make the time-consuming operation run asynchronous, asynchronously. And this decouples the throughput of the task from the latency of the external services. <coughs> now, let's see how the async operator works. Firstly, the async operator will, uh, will buffer the inputs in queue. And then it will, it, it will invoke the async function, which is a user-defined function. And also the users should use, use async method to access the external services in the async function. Then return, then return immediately in order not to block the processing. After the re response from external system come back asynchronously, it will re notify the framework to emit the outputs and uh, remove the inputs in queue. This is a asynchronized, asynchronized workflow. But if the task crashes with some pending inputs, the data may be lost. In order to solve this problem, we store the pending inputs to operator state when taking snapshot and recover them from the state in the next restart. Then we invoke the async function to replay. Uh, this ensures that no data is lost during recovery. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, we have contributed this performance improvement to Flink community as Flip 12. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's uh, that's the uh, 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 architect. Uh, that's the improvements about the performance. Uh, next, my colleague Zhi Jiang will give some uh, details about the uh, failover optimization. So welcome to Jiang. Thank you for. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Zhi Jiang from Alibaba company. Uh, it's my pleasure to share with you about runtime improvements for production services. Uh, I'll introduce uh, the three optimizers, optimizations uh, of failure, of failover. Uh, the first two parts are related to task failure recovery, and the last one is related to job manual failures. Now, I will talk about fingering the recovery from task failures. In your production, the best job is last scale to thousands of nodes. And in such large clusters, the node failure is a common case. Furthermore, we prefer to use non-pipeline mode for batch job due to limited results. That means uh, the, the upstream task will be scheduled first, then, the, uh, then it will re, re, uh, produce the data to persist in the, to persist in the stories. Uh, when the upstream task uh, finished, uh, the downstream task will be scheduled to consume data from persistent stories. Uh, in this situation, uh, when the when the downstream task fails, the whole execution graph will be restarted, and it is unnecessary for for down, for downstream task for upstream task to be restarted because the restarted downstream task can continue consumer data from persistent from persistent stories. <coughs> Uh, so, it, uh, so it provides us the opportunity to make a recovery more efficient by restarting only what needs to be restarted.
Now let, now, let, now, now let me explain the details of how it works. We introduced the failover strategy to handle task level failures. And the failover strategy is an abstraction which allows for different, different implementations. And we already implement a very simple strategy called restart all as the default one. It keeps the same behavior of current mode. And based on restart all strategy, any task failure will restart the execution graph. And look at another failover strategy based on failover regions. Sorry, I made some mistakes. And the failover the failover region is the mean. The failover region is the minimum unit of task restarts. We remove all the non pipeline edges from the execution graph. With this, the execution graph will be broken down into some connected components. And each connected component is a failover region. From the above execution graph, we assume that the connections between node B and C is non pipeline. So, four failover regions are constructed from it. And the failover strategy um, also communicates with each other uh, through the intermediate result. And there are two kinds of uh, failures. The first is a task failure. In this case, uh, 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 in this case a task fails. A task fails. Uh, in this case, a task fails. We will restart the region which contained the failed task. And second is data failure. In this case, a uh, non uh, non intermediate result produced by region uh, is cor corrupted. Uh, then we will restart the region and this reproduce the corrupted intermediate result. Now I will next I will talk about another imp Im improvement of allocation reviews for task recovery. In our production, the job the job state can be very big, so we use RockDB as state backend, <coughs> and this backend will store states in local RockDB directory first, and finally the states will be materialized to persistent store like HDFS. During task recovery. The task states would be recovered from state by hand. And as we know, it is expensive to, re to restore state from SDFS. So we want to restore state from local RockDB, and, and it is lightweight. To do so, we will submit the task in previous allocation. And it, it can also speed up the recovery. Now let me explain the details of how it works. <coughs> the prior execution list in execution graph will maintain the allocation information of recent field executions. So when the new execution attempt is scheduled, first it will try to get preferred location from the prior list and try to allocate it with the same task with the same task. Now I will talk about the improvement of job manager failures. Although the job manager failures is a small probability event compared with task failures, once it happened, all the running tasks are affected and they will be canceled in current code. And the new job manager will reschedule the job as usual for task recovery. Because there are no previous allocation information in the new job manager, so the improvement of the allocation reviews for task recovery cannot be confirmed, cannot be used. 
As I mentioned in previous section, our job is not scale to thousands of nodes, and the job state can be very large in TB level. So the cost is high for recovering states from SDFS for a lot of tasks with big states. Therefore, we want to handle the job manager failure in a non-disruptive way. <coughs> when the job manager runner grant, is granted leadership, <coughs> first, it's to determine whether the job is already running or not. Uh, if not, the job, we will schedule the execution graph as usual. Then the task manager will register to the job manager and offer slots for submitting tasks. If the job manager runner fails, another new job manager runner will be studied and be granted leadership. First, it, it also needs to check the current job status. If the job is already running, then the job manager will reconcile the execution graph. That means the global state and all the execution state will be on the transition to reconciling. The task managers will be notified of the new job leader. After registration success, the task manager will report to the ta job manager about the current running task status. And the job manager will also wait for the task manager to connect and report task status. And then it will, and then it will reconstruct the execution graph state from this report. If all the tasks are reported uh, before timeout, then the then the global state will be on the transition from reconciling to running. Task who, whose state will not be reconstructed in a certain time are consumed as failed then it will trigger regular task recovery. And the global state will be on the transition from reconciling to failing. Okay, okay. And, uh, uh, that, and that's all the improvements for failover. And, and these uh, features are also contributing to Flink community since the last year. Uh, some are already done, some are still in progress. Uh, next. My colleague's phone will give the future plans. Thanks, Jia. Uh, uh, last time, I will, uh, I will show our future plans in Alibaba. Uh, now, Blink is already very popular at Alibaba in the streaming scenarios. So, uh, there will be more and more uh, streaming application will move on, will, will run on Blink. Uh, and uh, we are also working hard to make batch application could be run production in the near future. Uh, we also, we are also planning to make Blink as a computing service in a whole Alibaba group. Uh, recently, our Blink cluster uh, is growing very fast. I think the production cluster size will double in this year with thousands of jobs run it. I think. Okay. That's all of our talks. Thank you very much. Do I have a question? Okay. Okay. Okay, so your question, your first question is about the batch. Uh, now the most uh, uh, production service are using uh, Flink streaming. Flink, uh, the batch is uh, uh, not pro on production now, but uh, in the near future it will be production about with Flink, but uh, maybe several months. Okay, uh, and, and I, I, as I mentioned above, uh, for batch jobs uh, in our production, there, the current mode in Flink will uh, cause some problems uh, because uh, 
or batch job scale is very large, and uh, the result is limited. So uh, for young, uh, young production, the, the batch job will be scheduled um, if, uh, from different steps. So first, the, the, so first the, the upstream task will be scheduled, and after it's finished, the, the downstream task will be scheduled. And in this mode, uh, if the downstream, and in, the, in this last, last cluster, the node failure is a common case. So if the downstream task is failed, then we, uh, the current mode needs to restart the whole, the, the, the whole graph. It's, uh, no matter what the, the downstream task is already finished. So we try to improve it. And this, and, and, and this improvement is undergoing. And uh, I, I think after this improvement is done, uh, the best job in our, in our production uh, can, can be run uh, stably. Uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, so the, the, the second question is uh, uh, Flink can, can be auto-scaled auto in Alibaba? Yes, question. Do you use auto-scaling? Auto uh, now we can only uh, scale, uh, uh, change the paradigm of the operators. Uh, we need the user to restart the job to, 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 to change the paradigms. Not, uh, cannot auto-scaling online. Or hot hot spot, hot hot update. Uh, next, uh, I we think uh, the next stage we we can uh, realize this feature. So the question is uh, how how to uh, uh, what's the size of uh, how, uh, how we manage the cluster and deployment for the cluster size? Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, uh, as, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we deploy Flink, jo uh, Flink jobs on Yarn, so we can uh, so uh, we uh, we will uh, the Flink can allocate the resources for every job according to the job resource spec. For example, if you submit a job, the job needs, uh, the job has a uh, file operator, and uh, every, op every operator have the uh, fixed uh, uh, a certain uh, paradigm. We can calculate the uh, total resource for the job, and then uh, they will uh, allocate, then the job, the resource manager will allocate the, the, the resource from Yarn and launch the certain a uh, certain number of uh, task managers. Uh, I guess my question is, do, do you do like uh, one job manager per job? Yes, yes. Oh. A native young application. Yes. Well, I two questions. The first question, you mentioned the roadmap you all use Blink as a service, right? Yes. So is it a service that applies to Alibaba Cloud, or is it a service built to internal to Okay. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Thank you. So your question is, uh, what kind of service does we provide? Right. Yes. Uh, for the, in the first step, we will uh, provide the Blink as service uh, internally okay. uh, to pr to different business unit in Alibaba. I think in, uh, in the future, uh, we 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 are planning to maybe we will plan uh, we will provide the uh, Flink service in Ali Cloud. Yeah. Uh, second question is, um, you mentioned you are running on Yarn. Do you do anything to this um, basic job schedule? Let's say I want X container. Um, have you seen like when Blink started, you are asked for some container, right? If your job failed, then quickly remove them. So it's kind of like swap thing. Have you uh, done this kind of issue before, or whether this is a problem for you guys? Uh, so the question is also uh, uh, related to the how, how we uh, request a slot or allocate resource for the job. Yes. Uh, <coughs> uh, now, uh, Blink, uh, one, in Blink, one job has 
uh, the dedicated the job manager and the resource manager. So the the user should set the the, op, uh, the resource for every op, op, operator. For example, you 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 uh, user could uh, set the CPU or the memory size for the map operator. Okay. Then we then the uh, then the resource manager could calculate the all the resources for the op, op, uh, map operator. Then we will uh, allocate the uh, allocate the task manager container from Yarn and launch this container. So the container size is suitable for the operator. Uh, yeah, if the class had no resources, no resources, the job will be failed. Uh, because the user, uh, user, user needs uh, uh, some user has the um, requirement for these res these resources. If the class can cannot pro uh, can ensure uh, enough resources, we can uh, let the user run this job. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Task is uh, one job manager resigns in one job manager's determined to one job. Yeah. So only one to one. So how do you, how do you do the leader? Okay. So as we okay. Okay. Also, where is the job manager uh, in John? Okay. So your question about the GM actually job master job manager actually high available job yes. manager. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, now in the Yarn, uh, for the native Yarn application, uh, if the Yarn application manager fail, uh, Yarn resource manager will relaunch it in another container. So the uh, if the if the first uh, job manager fail, then the Yarn will launch uh, another job ma job manager. Then the, then the second uh, the new job manager could uh, uh, become the new leader and take over the jobs. And, uh, and uh, in our current uh, implementation, we just uh, realized it uh, on YAR mode. Uh, on YAR mode, uh, that means uh, uh, oh, there will only one just man runner at the same time. So there will not um, two, two, man, man, two man just stand by. So if one failed and, uh, another is, and another is granted to be leadership it, it naturally. So maybe um, the, in the future, um, the other mode can support the, this mode, be stand, by, stand alone or, or, or others. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you guys.